Jeremiah chapter 38. Now Shephatiah son of Matan, Gedaliah son of Pashur, Jehuchel and son of Shemiah, Shelmiah, and Pashur son of Malkeha, heard what Jeremiah had been telling the people. He had been saying, This is what the Lord says. Everyone who stays in Jerusalem will die from war, famine, or disease. But those who surrender to the Babylonians will live. Their reward will be life. They will live. The Lord also says the city of Jerusalem will certainly be handed over to the army of the king of Babylon, who will capture it. So these officials went to the king and said, Sir, this man must die. This kind of talk will undermine the morale of the few fighting men we have left, as well as that of all the people. This man is a traitor. King Zedekiah agreed. All right, he said. Do as you like. I can't stop you. So the officials took Jeremiah from his cell and lowered him by ropes into an empty cistern in the prison yard. It belonged to Milkiah, a member of the royal family. Now, there was no water in the cistern, but there was a thick layer of mud at the bottom, and Jeremiah sank down into it. But Ebed Melka, an Ethiopian, an important official, heard that Jeremiah was in the cistern. At that time, the king was holding court at the Benjamin Gate. So Ebed Melech rushed from the palace to speak to him. My lord, the king, he said, these men have done a very evil thing in putting Jeremiah the prophet into the cistern. He will soon die of hunger, for almost the, all the bread in the city is gone. So the king told Ebed Melech, take 30 of my men with you and pull Jeremiah out of the cistern before he dies. So Ebed Melech took the men with him and went into the room in the palace beneath the treasury where he found some old rags and discarded clothing. He carried these to the cistern and loaded, lowered them to Jeremiah on a rope. Ebed Melech called down to Jeremiah, Put these rags under your armpits to protect you from the ropes. Then when Jeremiah was ready, they pulled him out. So Jeremiah was returned to the courtyard of the guard, the prison palace, where he remained. Now one day, King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah and had him brought to the third entrance of the Lord's temple. I want to ask you something, the king said, and don't try to hide the truth. Jeremiah said, If I tell you the truth, you will kill me. And if I, give you, if I give you advice, you won't listen to me anyway. So King Zedekiah secretly promised him, As surely as the Lord our Creator lives, I will not kill you or hand you over to the men who want you dead. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, This is what the Lord, God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel says, If you surrender to the Babylonian officers, you and your family will live, and the city will not be burned down. But if you refuse to surrender, you will not escape the city, will be handed over to the Babylonians, and they will burn it to the ground. But I'm afraid to surrender, the king said, for the Babylonians may hand me over to the Judeans, who have defected to them, and who knows what they will do to, to me. Jeremiah replied, you won't be handed over to them if you choose to obey the Lord. Your life will be spared and all will go well with you. But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. All the women left in your palace will be brought out and given to the officers of the Babylonian army. Then the women will taunt you saying, What fine friends you have. They have betrayed and misled you. When your feet sank in the mud, they left you to your fate. All your wives and children will be led out to the Babylonians and you will not escape. 
You will be seized by the king of Babylon, and this city will be burned down. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Don't tell anyone you told me this, or you will die. My officials may hear that I spoke to you, and they may say, Tell us what you and the king were talking about. If you don't tell us, we will kill you. If this happens, just tell them you begged me not to send you back to Jonathan's dungeon for fear that you would die there. Sure enough, it wasn't long before the king's officials came to Jeremiah and asked him why the king had called for him. But Jeremiah followed the king's instructions, and they left without finding out the truth. No one had overheard the conversation between Jeremiah and the king, and Jerem remained a prisoner in the courtyard of the guard until the day Jerusalem was captured. Chapter 39 of Jeremiah In January of the ninth year of King Zedekiah's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came with his entire army to besiege Jerusalem. Two and a half years later, on July 18th in the 11th year of Zedekiah's reign, a section of the city wall was broken down. All of the officers of the Babylonian army came in and sat in triumph in the middle gate. Nagel Shalazar and Shagmar and Novo Sereskim, a chief officer, and Nergalziar, the king's advisor, and all the other officers of the king of Babylon. When King Zedekiah of Judah and all the soldiers saw that the Babylonians had broken into the city, they fled. They waited for nightfall and then slipped through the gate between the two walls behind the king's garden and headed toward the Jordan Valley. But the Babylonian troops chased them and overtook Zedekiah on the plains of Jericho. They captured him and took him to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, who was at Ribba in the land of Hamath. There the king of Babylon pronounced judgment upon Zedekiah. The king of Babylon made Zedekiah watch as he slaughtered his sons at Riblah. The king of Babylon also slaughtered all the nobles of Judah. Then he gouged out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him in bronze chains to lead him away to Babylon. Meanwhile, the Babylonians burned Jerusalem, including the royal palace and the houses of the people, and they tore down the walls of the city. Then Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard who took the took exiles to Babylon, the rest of the people who remained in the city, those who had defected to him, and everyone else who remained. But Nebuzaradan allowed some of the poorest people to stay behind in the land of Judah, and he assigned to them the care for the vineyards and the fields. King Nebuchadnezzar told Nebuzaradan, the king of the guard, the captain of the guard, to find Jeremiah. See that he isn't hurt, he said. Look after him well and give him anything he wants. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, Nebuchadnezzar, a chief officer, Nergel Shalazar, the king's advisor, and the other officers of the Babylon's king sent messengers to bring Jeremiah out of the prison. They put him under the care of Gedaliah, the son of Achim, the son of Shaphon, who took him back to their home. So Jeremiah stayed in Judah among his people. The Lord had given the following message to Jeremiah while he was still in prison. Say to Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian, This is what the Lord of the heavens' armies, the God of Israel, says. I will do to this city everything I have threatened. I will send disaster, not prosperity. You will see its destruction. But I will rescue you from those you fear so much. Because you trusted me, I will give your life as a reward. 
I will rescue you and keep you safe. I, the Lord, have spoken. Jeremiah chapter 40 The Lord gave a message to Jeremiah after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had released him at Ramah. He had found Jeremiah bound in chains among the other captives of Jerusalem and Judah, who were being sent to die to exile in Babylon. The captain of the guard called for Jeremiah and said, The Lord your God has brought you this disaster on the land, just as he said he would. For these people have sinned against the Lord and disobeyed him. This is what happened. This is why it happened. But I am going to take off your chains and let you go. If you want to come with me to Babylon, you are welcome. I will see that you are well cared for. But if you don't want to come, you may stay here. The whole land is before you. Go wherever you like. If you decide to stay, then return to Gedaliah, son of Achim, the son of Shaphan. He has been appointed governor of Judah by the king of Babylon. Stay there with the people he rules, but it's up to you, whether you wherever you like. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the the captain of the guard, gave Je- Jeremiah some food and money and let him go. So Jeremiah returned to Gedaliah, son of Achim, at Mizpah. And he lived in Judah with the few who were still left in the land. The leaders of the Judean guerrilla bands in the countryside heard that the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah, son of Achim, as governor over the poor people who were left behind in Judah, the men, women, and children who hadn't been exiled to Babylon. So they went to see Gedaliah at Zimizpah. These included Ishmael, son of Nathaniah, Jonathan and Jonathan's sons of Kara, Sariah, the son of Tanhumath, the sons of Iphi, the Neophomite, Jezaniah, son of the Machathite, and all their men. Now Gedaliah vowed to them that the Babylonians meant them no harm. Don't be afraid to serve them. Live in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it all will go well with you, he promised. As for me, I will stay at Mizpah to represent you before the Babylonians who come to meet with us. Settle settle in the towns you have taken and live off the land. Harvest the grapes and summer fruits and olives and store them away. When the Judeans in Moab, Ammon, Edom, and the other nearby countries heard that the king of Babylon had left a few people in Judah and that Gedaliah was the governor, they began to return to Judah from the places to which they had fled. They stopped at Mizpah to meet with Gedaliah and then went into the Judean countryside to gather a great harvest of grapes and other crops. Soon after this, Jonathan, son of Cariah, and the other guerrilla leaders came to Gedaliah at Mizpah. They said to him, Did you know that the Baals king of Ammon has sent Ishmael, son of Nehemiah, to assassinate you? But Gedaliah refused to believe them. Later, Jonathan had a private conference with Gedaliah and volunteered to kill Ishmael, secretly. Why should we let him come and murder you? Jonathan asked. What will happen then to the Judeans who have returned? Why should the few of us who are still left be scattered and lost? But Gedaliah said to Jonathan, I forbid you to do any such thing, for you are lying about Ishmael. Jeremiah chapter 41 But in mid-autumn of that year, Ishmael, son of Nathani, and grandson of Elishama, who was a member of the royal family and had been one of the king's high officials, went to Mizpah with ten men to greet 
Gedaliah. While they were eating together, Ishmael and his ten men suddenly jumped up, drew their swords, and killed Gedaliah, whom the king of Babylon had appointed governor. Ishmael also killed all the Judeans and the Babylonian soldiers who were with Gedaliah at Mizpah. The next day, before anyone had heard about Gedaliah's murder, eighty men arrived from Shechem, Shiloh, and Samaria to worship at the temple of the Lord. They had shaved off their beards, torn their clothes, and cut themselves, and had brought along grain offerings and frankincense. Ishmael left Mizpah to meet them, weeping as he went. When he reached them, he said, Oh, come and see what has happened to Gedaliah. But as soon as they were all inside the town, Ishmael and his men killed all but ten of them and threw their bodies into a cistern. The other ten had talked Ishmael into letting them go by promising to bring him their stores of wheat, barley, olive oil, and honey that they had hidden away. The cistern where Ishmael dumped the bodies of the men he murdered was the large one dug by King Asa when the fortif when he fortified Mizpah to protect himself against King Basha of Israel. Ishmael, son of Nathani, filled it with corpses. Then Ishmael made captives of the king's daughters and the other people who had been left under Gedaliah's care in Mizpah by ne Nebuzadarn the captain of the guard. Taking them with him, he started back toward the land of Ammon. But when Johanan, son of Korea, and the other guerrilla leaders heard about Ishmael's crimes, they took all their men and set out to stop him. They caught, caught up with him at the large pool near Gibeon. The people Ishmael had captured shouted for joy when they saw Johanan and the other guerrilla leaders and all the captives of Mizpah escaped and began to help Johanan. Meanwhile, Ishmael and eight of his men escaped from Johanan into the land of Ammon. Then Johanan, son of Korea, and the other guerrilla leaders took all the people they had rescued in Gibeon, the soldiers, women, children, and court officials whom Ishmael had captured after he killed Gedaliah. They took them all to the village of Geruth Kimaham near Bethlehem, where they prepared to leave for Egypt. They were afraid of what the Babylonians would do when they heard that Ishmael had killed Gedaliah, the governor appointed by the Babylonian king.